Okay, so what is an atom? Anything that's in red is going to be repeated, but you really got to know it, okay? So it says, an atom is often referred to as a building block of matter. Atoms are composed of smaller subatomic particles, such as the proton, neutron, and electron. They have a nucleus surrounded by an electron cloud. Remember, that was that last scientist in our atomic theory that kind of thought about who that was. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, thought about that electron cloud model. So y'all remember who the scientist was that developed that idea? From y'all's PowerPoints? James. James Chadwick? I was thinking it was Schrollinger. Was it him? It may have been Chadwick. I have to go back and look at the PowerPoints that y'all did. Because those guys had a lot to do with each other. So, that's kind of weird. So anyway, um, that came much later in the atomic theory. In fact, for many, many years, uh, up until like the 1930s and stuff like that, we didn't know about the electron cloud. So that came much later. Okay, each element is composed of one type of atom and cannot be broken down into a simpler substance. Okay, so that's important. So if you have gold, it's not going to be able to be changed to silver. Even though way back when chemistry first started becoming a science, there were these people called alchemists. And the deal with the alchemists was they were trying to get rich by turning really cheap type of metal into gold. And so they would get lead because lead's really heavy. And they thought if we could turn lead into gold, we'll be super rich, like overnight. And so they were trying their hardest to like manipulate matter and turn it into something it wasn't. And you can't do that, not with a pure element. So you can't just take lead and turn it into gold or gold into lead. If we could do that, then it would devalue everything out there because we could change it back and forth. And so each element is composed of an entirely different type of atom. And once you get to that atom, you can't recreate it or break it down any further. The inner structure of an atom. The nucleus is a small, dense, positively charged center of the atom, which contains most of the atomic mass. Okay, so if you all remember, some of the PowerPoints yesterday, it may not have been in this class, somebody pointed out yesterday in their PowerPoint that the protons and neutrons are the mass of the atom, that they weigh a lot more than the electron does. Now that seems really strange because, um, you know, atoms themselves are so tiny we can't see them, but yet they say the nucleus is where all the mass is and the electron practically weighs nothing. And it's just because the electron is really just a really charged, it's a charged particle and it's a, it's a negatively charged particle and it just kind of zooms around the nucleus uh, in a cloud form. And so we don't really don't calculate a mass when it comes to the electrons. The neutrons and the protons have the same mass. So if there's one proton and one neutron, then we say it has an atomic mass of two. Now the only atom out there that doesn't have a neutron is hydrogen. Hydrogen only has one proton and one electron. And so hydrogen has an atomic mass of just one. Okay. Now we'll talk about different forms of atoms because there are kind of the odd ones out there, but we'll save that for another time. Okay. The nucleus contains subatomic particles. Now this word is subatomic right here. That subatomic word just means smaller than an atom. And so really the only thing that would be smaller than an atom would be the things that make up the atom. And so uh, the subatomic particles are what you guys said a minute ago. Protons, neutrons, electrons. When you see subatomic on a quiz or test, it often confuses students because it seems like a really fancy word. But all sub means is smaller than. If you think submarine, submarine just means it goes below the surface of the water. It's under it. It's smaller than that. It's, it's kind of what that almost means, under or smaller than. And so subatomic just means smaller than an atom. Well, the only thing smaller than atoms are the things that make up atoms. Okay? So the subatomic particles include the protons. Protons are positively charged particles in the nucleus of the atom. And then there are neutrons. Neutrons are particles in the nucleus that have no charge, but contribute to the atom's mass. Okay? So the only real difference between protons and neutrons is because they're both in the nucleus. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons have no charge. And the way I have my students remember that is neutron just means neutral, no charge. Okay? Proton starts with a P, it's positive. Okay? That's the way I get my students to remember that. Uh, so protons and neutrons make up the mass of the atom. They're both in the nucleus and they both have the same size. Okay? Okay, the outer structure of the uh, atom is the electron cloud. The electron cloud is an area encircling the nucleus where electrons are likely to be found. Now we say likely to be found because, you know, an earlier scientist in the atomic theory 
thought we could identify where the electrons were at any given moment. Well, we found out later that that's not the case. The electrons are always moving about in a very rapid wave type form. And so we give it this electron cloud idea. The cloud contains energy levels, which we'll talk about energy levels uh, possibly at the end of class today, but definitely next week. Electrons are negatively charged. There's no real easy way to remember that because E and negative don't have the same letter. You just have to remember electrons are negative. You have to memorize that. There are pre negative particles located in specific energy levels. These energy levels completely surround the nucleus. There is a specific order for the electrons to fill the energy levels. Now we will touch on that in middle school, but you guys will elaborate. You'll go further with this idea when you get to high school, you'll learn about s orbitals and p orbitals and all these different energy levels that are within the atom. Uh, we don't go into those too much in, in too much depth in middle school. We just want to get you a good foundation so that when you do get into high school, you know they can move on and build on what you guys know from middle school. Okay. Give y'all just a few more seconds to get this up there, and then we'll move on. Okay. The outer structure of the atom, the energy levels. Are com they, they completely surround the, uh, the nucleus. So this first one can only contain two electrons. That's really important because it's so close to the nucleus of the atom that there's not a whole lot of space going around it. It's kind of like looking at, uh, you know, if we look at the planet, the solar system. The planets that are closer to the sun take less time to go around the sun because they're closer to it, you know, where we take 365 days. So the inner planets be before us, the ones that are before us, uh, Mercury and all those, they actually uh, go around the sun much faster because they have a smaller orbit. So if you think about that, then this, this first ring can only hold up to two electrons. The next one can have eight. And two and eight is a big rule in my classroom because we really are not going to deal with these other ones, these other energy levels, in middle school so much. Okay? But go ahead and write this diagram in your journal. Put the nucleus, put your little line, and put a maximum of two electrons. The second ring can hold up to 8. The um, third ring can hold uh, up to 18. This other one can hold 32. And then the maximum of this outer ring is 50. So we can only imagine if we keep adding more and more electrons, the nucleus must have more and more stuff in it too. Because here's an important thought about, uh, about atoms. All atoms in the periodic table are neutral, which means they have the same amount of positive particles as they do negative particles. And so if they have 50 uh, protons in the nucleus, they must have 50 electrons to balance the charge. Does that make sense? Because remember, electrons are negative, protons are positive. And so if we have 20 protons, how many electrons are we going to have? 20. 20. It's not a real big puzzle game, right? Let's say 120. What are we going to have? 120. 120. They're going to match up because they've got to be equal with each other. Okay. And so, as we get to these other energy rings out here, these are the atoms that weigh the most. Not because the electrons have mass, but because the nucleus has that many protons sitting there inside. And they usually have an equal, or very close to equal number of neutrons, okay? There are some discrepancies there, some little differences in those cases. But for the most part, that's a pretty sound rule. Okay, the outer structure of the atom. Valence electrons are the outermost energy level, and are the electrons involved in bonding. Okay, that's a new word. Okay, y'all probably haven't heard of bonding before. If y'all talked about the atom before in elementary or sixth or seventh grade, you might not have talked a whole lot about bonding. And the best way to understand bonding is it's almost like two Legos sticking together. When we start getting atoms that will connect together, then we get compounds, which are, you know, plastics, they're wood, they're paper, they're uh, you guys. You know, everything is made of compounds, unless they're a pure element like gold or silver or copper or, or something like that, or carbon. When we start adding different atoms together, they bond up. But even if they're a pure element, let's say that we have a strand of carbon atoms. A diamond is a fine example. A diamond is 100% carbon. It's, it's a chain of atoms that are connected together by bonds, okay? They just happen to be the strongest bonds of anything on our planet that we know of, right? Because... Uh, diamonds are the hardest mineral, okay? Hardest mineral. So valence is the number of bonds an atom can form, okay? Now, we will look more at valence electrons. They're very important. Valence electrons are the ones on the very outside of the atom. And they're the ones that do all the connecting. They're like the little bumps on the Legos that connect with the bottom side of another Lego, okay? So those valence electrons are what's going to connect with each other on other atoms. 
An atom is most stable when its outer energy level is full. Now that may not make a whole lot of sense to you, but as we look at the periodic table, that's going to really become something you really understand and know a lot about. Because the, the more electrons we get in the outer ring, the more stable and less uh, dangerous the atom becomes. Now, sometimes we have some atoms that are still dangerous because they're toxic. I didn't say poisonous, right? Poisonous is different than dangerous, in my opinion. Okay? When I say dangerous, I mean unstable. They're going to blow up in your face. They're very reactive. Um, they're, they're, you know, really unstable type of atoms. But the more electrons they get in that outer ring, the better they're going to be. Okay? Okay, here's some characteristics of atoms. The number of protons in the nucleus is the atomic number of that atom. That's going to become really important to us when we look at the periodic table. The number of protons, positive, equals the number of electrons, like I said earlier. If we have 20 protons in the nucleus, we're going to have 20 electrons sitting outside the nucleus. Okay? The atomic mass is the mass of the protons plus the mass of the neutrons. Now, you all have heard the word mass before. Mass is basically, we get it mixed up a lot when we talk about things, but we always want to refer to mass as weight, which is kind of a misconception because weight is really a measurement of gravity. But when we talk about the mass, it's how much stuff makes it up. Okay, how much is in there. So when we look at the mass of an atom, we're really only interested in the protons and the neutrons. The electrons are so little and insignificant compared to what's in the nucleus that we don't even calculate them as weight or mass. Okay? Atomic uh, mass is reported in the SI unit, atomic mass unit. Now we abbreviate that like AMU. Now this would be like me saying 20 grams. Grams would be the unit. 30 meters. Uh, 50 milliliters. Every time I say a unit, that falls on the end of the number. So if we're talking about atoms mass, we're going to put AMU. That's just an abbreviation for atomic mass unit. Okay? We can't use pounds, we can't use grams, we can't use anything with atoms because they're so small. They fall way below our typical unit of measurement. So we use AMU to, re uh, to represent the mass of atoms. Okay? Protons and neutrons are each given an AMU of 1. So hydrogen, I mentioned earlier, has one proton, one electron. So what do you think its atomic mass is? One proton, one electron. Okay, see, I had two fingers up, but that's not the answer, because we don't count the electrons. So what is it? One. Just one. Because a proton has an AMU of one, but a neutron also does. So let's say we had an atom with three uh, protons and three neutrons. What's it going to be? Three. Six. Because remember, the neutron and proton weigh the same. So we add the protons and neutrons. It, here's a simple way of remembering it. We only get the weight from what's in the nucleus. What did y'all tell me was in the nucleus? Y'all told me earlier. Protons and, and neutrons. So when we add the protons and neutrons together, we get the atomic mass. Okay? So electrons really have no mass. Just get that in your mind that we're never going to weigh an electron. Okay? Okay, decoding uh, atoms information. This is the kind of box you'll see on the periodic table. This one represents carbon. A few important things about this. Okay? The six has some significance, okay? That's the atomic number. So if I say find the atomic number six on your periodic table, I'm referring to carbon. The C just says it's the letter that we represent. When we do chemical symbols or equations, we're going to use a symbol. Carbon is just the name, and 12 is the atomic mass. So it has six protons. This number right here will tell you the number of protons always, okay? It will not tell you the neutrons, though, because the neutrons sometimes differ. But this will always tell you protons. And what did I say about every atom? They're neutral. So what else do we know will also be six? If it has six protons, what else will it have? Six electrons. So always remember that this number will always represent protons. If an atom goes through a chemical change, like it connects with other atoms, it's going to give away or take electrons from something else. So when we talk about uh, chemical reactions, this will not tell me the electrons, oftentimes, because it has given them away or taken them, uh, or, or it's taken them from something else. But if you just remember, the six will always tell me protons. This number tells me a combination of protons and neutrons. Well, if it has six protons, I could take 12 and subtract six, and that will tell me six neutrons, okay? And that is the way we do it in, in science, uh, in the periodic table. To find the neutrons, we always subtract. We take this number and subtract this number from it, 
and we will find the neutrons.